today's lecture is cancer lecture one, the first lecture of cancer biology. Cancers are complex group of diseases affecting a wide range of cells and tissues, which means we can see cancers in uh, a lot of different types of tissues and different types of cells. Uh, the reason, the basic reason for carcinogenesis, carcinogenesis means cancer formation, formation of cancer, are mutations. Mutations that alter gene expression are regarded as common feature of all cancers. Now, first of all, I have to say, every cancer is another disease. Every kind of cancer is a separate, separate, different disease. But they have a common feature, which is mutations. Mutations that alter gene expression. In most cancer cases, mutations arise in somatic cells and they are not passed on future generations through germ cells. Now, uh, at this point, there are two important terms I want you to notice. Let's highlight them. Somatic cells and germ cells. I hope you remember these two terms. Somatic cells are our body cells. Germ cells are gametes. So cancers usually arise uh, because of the mutations in somatic cells. So since those mutations are in the somatic cells, they do not affect uh, sperms or eggs, then they are not uh, transmitted to the next generations. Mo this is for most of the cancer cases. There are exceptions, uh, which we call inherited cancers, but usually cancers are caused by mutation, mutations arise in somatic cells. About 1% of all cancer cases, germline mutations of various genes are transmitted transmitted to offspring generations, and they are responsible for susceptibility to cancer. Now, at this point, we have a new term, which is germline mutation. So a group of mutations are called germline mutations. These are the mutations that we already know from the genetics, from genetic lecture. But uh, these germline mutations cause only 1% of cancers. So rest of the cancers, which means 99%, nearly 99% of cancers are caused by somatic mutations, which means mutations arising in somatic cells. Sometimes for cancer to occur, the inherited mutation itself is not sufficient. So even though there is a germline mutation which can cause cancer that is not sufficient to uh, trigger cancer. These mutations must be accompanied by additional somatic mutations at the homologous locus, creating homozygosity. I hope you remember homologous chromosomes and the word locus so uh, sometimes these germline mutations are passed to the new generation, but even though they do not start cancer, when a second mutation in the homologous part of the home, in the same part of the homologous chromosome, that causes start of cancer. So in this case, we can classify mutations in two groups according to this germline mutations and somatic mutations. About 1% of all cancers, germline mutations of various genes are transmit transmitted 
to offspring and they are responsible for susceptibility to cancer. This is only 1%. Sometimes for the cancer to occur, the inherited mutations itself is insufficient and they must be accompanied by additional somatic mutation at the homologous locus, creating uh, homozygosity. So you have mutant allele of one gene and uh, on the homologous chromosome, on the homologous pair of that chromosome, at the beginning, at birth, the uh, person has the, a normal copy, a normal allele of the same gene. Uh, when the normal allele mutates, and when it's converted to the mutant allele, then the patient is homozygote for that locus, and that causes start of cancer. We can say cancer is a genetic disorder at cellular level. Cancer is considered as a genetic disorder at the cellular level. So it is a disease of cells. Genetic alterations associated with cancer can involve small scale changes such as single nucleotide alterations. So only one base on the DNA can change and that can be cause of cancer. We call these kind of mutations small scale changes or point mutations, you should remember. <coughs> or they can be large scale events. That those large scale, scale events can be chromosomal rearrangements or chromosomal gain or chromosomal loss. We call all of these chromosomal mutations or chromosomal abnormalities. So we can see both group of mutations in cancer cells. Point mutations and chromosomal mutations. Uh, point mutations can be single nucleotide changes, which are base substitutions or small insertions and small deletions, which we call small indels. Also, uh, the cancer causing mutations can be large scale events and they can be at chromosomal level. They can be chromosomal abnormalities, including chromosomal rearrangements, uh, like uh, transversions, or chromosomal uh, gain or loss. Gain of a whole chromosome, which means chromosomal duplication or loss of a whole chromosome, or a piece of chromosome can be deleted or duplicated. We can see all of these in cancer cases. Another cause, another genetic cause which we see with uh, cancer cases is integration of viral genomes into chromosomal sites. We are gonna see this in next lecture. So there are three kinds of, kinds of genetic alterations seen in cancer cells, small scale changes, which are point mutations at nucleotide level, large scale events, chromosomal abnormalities, and integration of viral genomes into chromosomal sites. If you can remember from virology, some viruses, integrate their genomes into the host cell genome. And if this happens uh, close to an oncogene, these viruses can activate a proto-oncogene and convert it to oncogene. Development of cancer varies depending on particular mutant, mutant alleles mutations in other genes and environmental factors. So even though the uh, two cases of cancer are the same type, they can show different prognosis. They can be seen in slightly different phenotypes. This is dependent on which gene is mutated, which other genes are mutated in addition to the primary mutated gene and also environmental factors. 
So environmental factors are also effective in carcinogenesis, cancer formation. These variables may influence age of onset and severity of disease. This is what I was saying, different phenotypes. Age of onset means when the disease starts, when we, see the, when we start to see the disease phenotype in the person. Severity of disease uh, means how uh, bad the conditions of disease are. Mutations in cancer susceptibility genes increase the risk of cancer. So there are some genes which we call cancer genes, which are oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. But in addition, there are susceptibility genes. So mutations in those susceptibility genes also increase the risk of cancer, even though they do not directly um, participate in cancer formation. Variant alleles of these genes may have important roles in sporadic cancers, as well as familial forms of cancers. So in the previous slides, we have learned two different groups of mutations one of which was somatic mutations, and the other group was germline mutations. Now we see two groups of cancers, sporadic cancers and familial cancers. Sporadic cancers uh, are caused by somatic mutations. Familial cancers are caused by germline mutations. Please learn this connection now. So if the person has an inherited form of cancer, which means uh, the cause of cancer is germline mutation, is germline mutation, which uh, the patient inherits from uh, his or her parents, then we call this group of cancers, familial cancers or inherited cancers. But even though the uh, patient starts life with, the tot with totally normal alleles of all cancer genes during his life, in a part of his body, in a cell, in maybe only in, only in, only in a one single cell, uh, one of the mutations hit the uh, cancer genes, cancer gene, and that triggers cancer. That group of cancer, that group of cancers are called sporadic cancers. There's a question. Uh, is there any example for second cancer? Yes, there are, example, there are examples for second group of cancers. I think you mean the familial forms of cancer. Uh, there are familial forms of Melanoma, I know, there are uh, familial forms of melanoma, that's one group. Also, uh, there are uh, intestinal cancers, which is, uh, which is called FAP, familial adenomatous uh, polyps, uh, that starts with familial polyps, and it's usually uh, evolved to, it's usually evolved to uh, intestinal cancer. So there are a lot of different cancers, uh, which have familial basis. There is also another group of cancers uh, which we see uh, different types of cancers with different members of the family. But if you take it in general, cancer phenotype, the general cancer phenotype can be followed with Mendelian pedigrees in the family. In that case, we call it the Fromenis syndrome. So there are uh, familial cancers, but remember from the previous uh, slides, that's only 1% of all cancer cases. So 99% of can cancers are sporadic cancers, okay? All right. Mutations in cancer genes convert normal cells into malignant tumors. So two new terms, normal cells, malignant tumors. 
So in here, we can ask the question, what properties of cancer cells distinguish them from normal cells? Because we say there are normal cells and they can be converted into cancer cells, which means malig malignant tumor cells. So what makes cancer cells different than normal cells? Cancer cells have two properties in common, two most important properties of cancer cells. One, uncontrolled growth, which means cell division, uncontrolled cell division or uncontrolled growth. Two, ability to metastasize or spread from their, their original site to other locations in the body, which means the other organs and other tissues. So if you can see both of these properties in a group of cell, you can think that is cancer. Without ability to metastasize or spread to uh, other locations of the body, if you see only uncontrolled growth or only uncontrolled cell division, that is not cancer yet. That is a tumor. So it can be also benign. But cancers start as benign tumors, which is not able to metastasize. Then when this tumor, when a group of cells in this tumor gain the ability to metastasize, uh, that causes or that is beginning of cancer. In cancer cells, control on cell cycle is lost and cells proliferate rapidly. So the important thing with cancer cells is loss of control on the cell cycle. So cancer is a disease or cancers are diseases caused by loss of control on cell cycle. Metastasis. We say it's metastasis. What does it mean? Metastasis of cancer cell is controlled by the gene products that located on the cell surface. So metastasis is also dependent on the genes. There are also a group of genes which are effective on metastasis phenotype, metastasis behavior of the cell. Metastasis is related to how cells interact with the extracellular matrix and with other cells through the cell surface molecules. So in here, we can see the importance of extracellular matrix and interaction of the cell with extracellular matrix and the other cells in the same tissue, the other neighboring cells. And these connections are made by uh, special proteins located on the cell surface or cell membrane of the cell. Cancers are counted as the most common genetic diseases. But cancers are different than the other genetic disorders, all other genetic disorders. Uh, so cancer is widely recognized as most common, as most common uh, genetic disease. One in three people are afflicted with cancer during their lifetimes and one in five will die of this condition. Cancer is a genetic, but cancer is a genetic disorder at genome level. So in cancer, not only one or two genes, but a lot of genes in the genome are affected by the mutations. So keep in mind, there is uh, a five hits hypothesis. So for cancer to start or uh, for cancer formation, at least five cancer genes must be mutated and uh, lose their functions or they must uh, start misfunctioning. So there's an area of cancer uh, study, 
cancer genetics. This is concerned about how many genes are altered in each cancer, in each cancer type, which mechanisms drive these alterations, underlying the process that transform normal cells to malignant colonies and enable their uncontrolled proliferation. Also, biochemical changes acquired abilities and cellular traits that shared by all cancers. So shared characteristics of all cancer cells. So cancer genetics is the branch of science which is concerned about these questions. There are six essential capabilities of cancer cells. You remember in the previous cell, I said uh, cellular traits, that shared by all cancers, the shared characteristics of cancer cells. There are six of them. One, self-sufficiency in growth signals, insensitivity to anti-growth signals, evading apoptosis, sustained angiogenesis, limitless reproductive power, tissue invasion and metastasis. So these are um, common features of all cancer cells. There are some more actually, uh, you should remember uh, the paper I suggested. Again, that's Weinberg's paper, uh, Hallmarks of Cancer, that's right. There are actually 11. Difference of cancer cells, let's look at their phenotypes and these differences in some more details. Normal cells are carefully programmed to participate in contrasting the diverse tissues that make organismic survival possible. So what does it mean? So if you look at a multicellular organism, all multicellular organisms have different organs. Every single organs have different tissues, which means Every organ is, uh, is consist of different tissues, like epithelial tissue, um, connective tissue, uh, and etc. etc. etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Uh, So every single organ and every single tissue and every single cell in those tissue are programmed to make a specific, a special architecture, which we call tissue architecture. And that causes organ, organ uh, architecture. Uh, every single cell are programmed to participate that architecture, to make every organ in the special shape, uh, in the special structure to function correctly according to organism's needs. But cancer cells have a quite different and more focused agenda. Cancer cells appear to be motivated by only one consideration, making more copies of themselves. They don't care anything else. So cancer cells, differently, from rest of the cells of the body, different from the normal cells, don't care about the tissue architecture, organ architecture, organ architecture, or function of the organ, function of the tissue. They do only one thing. They just reproduce, which means they just divide. So this interferes with the tissue architecture, architecture of the organ. So it causes changes and disturb, disturbing uh, the function of the organ. That's the basic problem with the cancer. Tumors arise from normal tissues. Tissues and complex uh, organisms arise from fertilized egg. So let's go back to, let's go to very beginning. All right, there's a question. Mehmet Izmirli, Hocam, if we think in perspective of organism, cancer cells look like 
they are faulty, but in the perspective of uh, a cell, I think they are better than healthy cells. Yes, for the cell, it seems better, but cell of a cell of a multicellular organism needs the whole organism to be alive. So this misbehavior, this wrong behavior of cancer cells cause the whole organism to die and that causes cancer cells to die. Okay? Come on, Mehmet. Very good. All right. If we go to the very beginning of life, all tissues, all cells, and all, all, all organs of the complex organism, multicellular organisms, arise from only one cell, which is fertilized egg. How do we call that cell, fertilized egg? No. How do we call zygote? Yes, correct. Aferin Mehmet İzmirli. Mehmet İzmirli cezadan kurtuldum. All right. Uh, Yunus Eken sana da aferin. Muhammed Nurullah sana da aferin. Zigot diyen herkese aferin. All right. So, uh, all cells of the complex organism start with only one cell, which is fertilized egg zygote. All tissues are composed of cells and cell products. So, the structure which we call tissue is a collection of specific cells, special cells, specialized cells, and their products, which constitutes the extracellular material or extracellular matrix. All cells arise from pre-existing cells. You should remember. Do you remember this rule? All cells arise from pre-existing cell. What is this? Cell theory, aferin. Very good, cell theory. So one of the laws uh, of cell theory, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. The fertilized egg is able to spawn uh, all the cells in the body. So in our bodies, in an adult body, in the body of an adult organism, there are a lot of different, hundreds of thousands of different cell types, millions of cells and hundreds of thousands of different types of cells, different cell types. But all of them arise from a single cell. Then the cell at the beginning, the zygote, is able to produce different kinds of cells, cells in different types. Lots of potential for fails, that's right. Uh, so it is a, do you remember pluripotent cells and totipotent cells and multipotent cells? Yes, from stem cells, you should remember that. The uh, okay, fertilized egg is able to spawn all cells in the body. So it's a uh, all uh, the tumors are composed of masses of cells like normal tissues. So remember this rule: all cells arise from pre-existing cells, and if the tumors are com com uh, composed of cells, then they must arise from pre-existing cells as well. So whose body they are arise, that means the cancer cells are arise from that person's normal cells. So at this point, uh, we can see two different kinds of tumors, primary tumor and metastasis. Tumors of various types often derive directly from normal tissues in which they first discovered. Tumors are capable of moving within the body. You should remember this uh, from previous slides, which we call metastasis. These moving tumor cells are able to form new colonies through the body 
and these new settlements are termed metastases. But the tumor at, the, uh, at where the disease of cancer had begun is primary tumor. So the first tumor that formed in the persons, in the patient's body is primary tumor. Uh, the new colonies after this primary tumor metastasize are called metastases. So two important terms, metastasis or, and primary tumor. So every cancer starts with primary tumor, then some cells in the primary tumor gain the ability of metastasize. And when they do this, when they metastasize to other organs and tissues, and when they form new colonies in the other organs, those tumors are called metastases. Okay? All right. We talk about a term, I talked about the term, tissue architecture. So in a normal tissue, look at the left panel. So this picture is from Weinberg's book, the book that I uh, suggested you, Weinberg's uh, The Biology of Cancer book. Uh, so on left panel, on this panel, you can see the normal tissue architecture. So in this normal tissue, you can see every cell is organized in its original position. So this is a normal tissue. But when some of these cells lose their ability of, uh, on the cell cycle control, when they are converted to tumor cell, those tumor cells invade uh, the whole tissue and they convert the tissue to tumor, which is a mass like this. So this is uh, losing the tissue architecture. This is normal tissue architecture, and this is when the tumor loses uh, the tissue architecture. So in this picture, you can see all different types of cells. Uh, one group of cell here, another group of cell here, another type of cell here, and they are separated. But in tumor, there are only almost uh, there are one major type of cell which uh, covers almost almost everywhere, which tries to cover everywhere. All right, what happens if the tissue loses the tissue architecture? Again, on the top panel, you can see a normal uh, tissue, normal tissue architecture, and at the bottom, at the bottom uh, panel, you can see what happens after uh, tumor genesis. So this is a breast tissue. This is a breast tissue. Uh, so this is a milk duct. Uh, this is a channel in the middle, cavity. This is a cavity in the middle, and it's um, surrounded by the epithelial tissue, epithelial cells. So these are epithelial cells. And around the epithelial cell, there is connective tissue cells and other connective tissue elements. This is called stroma. Connective tissue is called stroma. So, so far, we talk about two different kinds of tissues, which we see in all mammals and humans. Epithelial tissue and connective tissue. There are a lot, there are a lot of other uh, tissues, but these two are very important for can, uh, cancer. So this is the normal uh, tissue architecture. How does the tissue establish this architecture? There is only one way: to control cell division. Control on the cell division. Again, control on cell cycle. Every cell must divide according to a plan according to the body plan. So if there's a cavity here, that means these cells stop dividing. So when the cell uh, come up to this point, these cells do not divide anymore. 
because there's a control on their cell division. If they divide, if they lose this cell, uh, this control on the cell division, they keep dividing. Nothing can stop them. And first they fill up this cavity and then uh, those uncontrolled cells spread out, uh, they spread through all the tissue. First, uh, they invade the nearby tissues, which is uh, stroma and nearby uh, tissues, and then they metastasize. So did you understand the difference between tissue architecture and how the cancer loses how the tumor loses the tissue architecture. All right. The organization of cells within tumor mass. So be careful. I don't say tumor tissue. Tumor is not a tissue because it's not specialized because tissues are specialized structures. Tumor is a mass. Tumors are cell masses. The organization of the cells within tumor mass the tissue architecture in a tumor is less organized and structured than the architecture of nearby normal tissues. So tumors are neighboring with the normal tissues. Tumors are created by cells that have lost the ability of assemble and create tissues of normal form and function. So in here, please be careful. Normal cells assemble in a plan. Uh, or uh, the normal cells assemble to create the tissue according to a plan. So they divide uh, according to a plan. And after a point, those cells, normal cells, stop dividing. Cancer cancers are disease of malfunctioning cells because they have lost ability of cell cycle control. 